Final Destination is a pretty unique horror film from the turn of the century, which is the 2000s. We thought the turn of the century was the 1900s. No, it's the 2000s. Come on, get with the times. It is an incredibly 2000s movie and as cheesy as possible. Though it does have interesting concept, it does film with a bag later on in the film. If I recommend anything about this movie, it's the opening scene, which is incredibly well done. Unfortunately, the rest of the film is not as good as the uh, opening scene, but let's get into the story and I'll explain why that is. If you haven't heard about Final Destination, it's about a movie where characters cheat their own deaths, but then death comes back to kill them. It's about some kid who's scared of flying, which is something that a, lot, a couple of people can relate to. Even though I'm not scared of flying, I still get a little jittery about going on planes sometimes. And honestly, it's kind of a unique thing to have in a film. I know that there's like an old Twilight Zone episode that has something about a monster in a plane, but actually being scared of flying is always something that a lot of people have, and I'm glad there's some tackles. And the opening sequence is done really well, I feel like. Even this crazy-ass death scene. But after the initial scene, the rest of the film goes downhill. So in case you didn't know, that main guy there, he has a premonition about his plane crashing, he actually sees it in a vision. And after realizing that he wakes up and sees that the vision might be partially true, he tells everyone to get off the plane, it's gonna crash, and he gets kicked off. The real premonition is the fact that this movie came out a year before 9-11, and it's talking about planes crashing. Scary. The vision, of course, ends up being true, and he actually saves a couple of his classmates and one teacher. And that is where they think he's a psychic. And is he? Uh, I don't know. They only show one vision. After the initial plane crash scene, which is actually done incredibly well, the rest of the film just kind of thumbs the bag and trying to mix up rules as it goes along. So essentially, there's a bunch of characters who are dying. And apparently the order they die in is the order that they were going to die on the plane, if that makes any sense. Well, they were going to die already, but they cheated their death, and now death's going to come back to get them. And how does death do that? By making this guy trip and somehow the wire goes around his neck and it chokes him? Like, what the fuck? How does that make any sense? Yeah, the rest of the films in this series have convoluted death scenes, but this one's just stupid. It's weird because the first scene is something that you couldn't imagine happening, like a plane crashing, but a guy tripping and then getting choked by some random thing in the bathroom that randomly goes around his neck is not realistic at all, so it's not scary. And like future installments, which has much more gore in these death scenes, this one's just a guy strangling in the dumbest way possible, so it's not scary. Which is the biggest problem in this film. The characters act like they know stuff but don't know stuff at the same time. It's written very sloppily and that's because it was basically written by committee where the studio executives have interfered way too much and ended up making the film way too messy than it needs to be. At the beginning of the film, the main character Alex gets giant a giant premonition and the other time he's like, oh I got a piece of paper that says the character might die and maybe this character will die too. But it's never explained how or why they're going to die really or in the order they come in. Which is kind of basic. So this character either has psychic visions or doesn't. He had one obvious one, but the other ones, like, what do they mean? Nothing. And there's an awkward as hell scene where they're supposed to have chemistry with this one girl. A lot of the other scenes were cut in the original script. And the girl's like, I don't even know anything about you, but I feel like I love you now, or something like that, because we have a connection. You're like this ugly-ass sculpture I made. It's like, gee, thanks. I'm like, what the fuck is this scene about? She's like, look at this sculpture. It reminds me of you. He's like, well, this is an ugly ass sculpture, because it is. Like, what the fuck does this mean? Nothing. It's poorly written schlop, that's what it is. So yeah, I was a little bummed out, but the rest of the film, even though it is not very good, it is entertainingly bad, if that makes any sense. The characters are named after an actor who played Nosferatu, but every we say the word Shrek, you think about the character Shrek from DreamWorks. This is my swamp. One of the dumbest scenes is one of the people who survive thinks the other guy knows he's going to die next, which he is, but thinks it's because he's psychic. But it's not because he's actually psychic, it's because he read a newspaper and thought, oh, this must be the order. Because it's not really being psychic. Like, I wish there were more into the psychic powers. Maybe they go more than that in the sequels, but in this film, there's nothing to it. So the guy stops in a train track and like, uh-oh, I can't start my car because I'm a fucking idiot. Like, I'm not even sure if he was clear he wanted to die or get answers. Either way, it's a dumbass scene. But this is where they find out that they can cheat death again, even though... They kind of establish that they can prevent certain things, but now is the only time they can confirm that it can happen. And what that means is that this guy over here needs to get his head chopped off because he's technically next, and yeah, this scene wasn't totally not scary at all. Not that a horror movie has to be scary, but the fact that this scene is so funny <laughs> that I cracked up when I saw his head fall off. The reason why I'm mentioning the scariness really is because the opening scene I felt had a pretty good fear factor, at least in my opinion, a unique one, because this had a situation that you could see yourself in. But, like, a fate or death coming after somebody by killing them in a convoluted way is not something that I think anyone's ever been scared of. And I know a lot of horror movies have, like, fictitious monsters and stuff like that, but that's someone coming after you. This is a random entity that just does kills you in th ways that wouldn't even make any sense. So that's why this film doesn't work for me. Like, death is just water, I guess, and it just goes and stuff, and then it makes a woman die. 
it's like a ch random chain of reaction where alcohol burns down a whole house. It's not like a rubbing alcohol, it's just vodka. So yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. If the whole premise is that these death scenes can be prevented, but they seem so oddly specific, so in turn time, if there's no way to even prevent a lot of these. Like, how is this woman supposed to prevent the, everything trying to kill her? Like, it seems like death doesn't have any boundaries, really, for the, the, that part. So, like, really, what's the point? You're just gonna die anyway. And maybe a smart film would have wrote more into that, but this film does not do that. Like, literally, everything in this woman's house wants to kill her, so what's the point of even trying to prevent it? If this is some random cosmic entity that's doing this, like, well, what's the point? That's the whole thing. You can't get into it because they don't explain how it's even preventable, and the characters don't even seem to care that much about it. Even the ending is stupid. Like, okay, after one scene, like, okay, we I survived this, so that means we're not going to die again. It was like, wait, you're next in the chalking block. Oh, wait, yeah, I am. And then it comes back after them again. At least in the original script, they made a thing that they, they create new life so they can avoid death. And that made a little more sense. They actually were trying to do something, but this the, the fucking mandates of New Life Cinema are like, you know what, let's make it make no sense. So the film's very convoluted and feels like making up as it go along. The reason why I'm talking about it, like I'm mad about it, is because the film started off so promising and it just goes so fall falls flat on his face. From what I've seen, the sequels look like they're more entertaining, at least when it comes to the death scenes, which, if they're going to be convoluted, we want them to be more entertaining. The acting is kind of flat, but fine for some characters, other characters not so much. The film is just a mess, but it's an entertaining mess. Get some friends and watch this movie, and you can have a good laugh, I guess. But you want something that's going to take itself a little bit more seriously or try to scare you more. You're not going to get it in this film, unfortunately. But I don't say it's not recommend. I don't not recommend you don't watch it because it is entertaining and the fun, cheesiest way possible. So yeah, that's Final Destination. Maybe next year I'll watch one of the sequels. If you like this film, good on you. I kind of like it. I just think that it has some missed potential. And you let me know if the sequels improve on anything in the comment section down below. We're getting close to the end of the Halloween marathon. I'm so sad, but hey, we got another movie tomorrow, and I'll see you then. We can't keep cheating death. The fact that we're in this fireworks and bomb factory. This is so dumb.